Mm -hmm. So, so Jim, in, in this this first period, minus books and, and getting getting ready kind of period, uh, you, know, you heard Bob talk yesterday about the the core of teaching and learning being messy, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking that you might be thinking that in your third year, as you prepare, as, as you did the first part of that school year, that it was quite messy or messier than that first period in your second year when you started right off with the books mm -hmm. and people started on different notes, easier to get notes. Would you say it was messier that third year? And and if so, how do you how do you how do you get through that mess? Oh, it was it was definitely messier. You know, because for instance, a little clarinet when you're asking kids to play, you know, shy emoji, it's going to squeak. You know, all kids, like you have twenty clarinets, they're all squeaking. Not, not one of them is really <laughs> going to be successful at the beginning of us. You know, they're, they're just lucky, and it will just be lucky. They're not going to be able to reproduce that tomorrow. So that's extremely messy learning um, for the kids. But going through that process of, you know, not succeeding and then succeeding, that's going to be much more valuable to them um, in the end. I mean, I suppose patience would be a word that, would right. just, that, that you needed at this beginning period. You knew where you were headed, but you weren't going to get there in a real, the really clean way uh, with every student. And so, and not fast. And not fast. So you know, how do you how do you deal with that? Because you know, day day three is going to be a lot like day two, and you're going to have more squeaking on day three. And you know, somehow you put up with that and got through it, got the students to be successful along the way. Um, well, you know, if you if you realize what um, what kind of value comes out of what you're trying to to make the students do to you know produce those first pitches, and how valuable it will be. For them to have a good sound quality and good tone quality yeah. later on, so that you know when you're playing all this other stuff, you don't have to to go back and focus on those fundamentals as much because they're kind of already in place, and you, and you realize that that value is there. I um, mean, that kind of helped push me through to realize that you know I'm going in the right direction. I hear a lot of squeaking in the room right now, but I will be going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then when the kids do, you know, get to play with all the G, and you get a whole section of 20 clarinet players playing a low G, it sounds awesome, it sounds beautiful, and that's a really exciting day. Uh -huh. um, but getting through that process, really keeping my spirits up and keeping the sp kids' spirits up, I mean, that was a bit of a challenge at first, um, reminding them that, you know, it's a good thing. Squeaking, go for it. Go squeak, get it out of the way, because, you know, you're going to squeak your entire life. We're all going to fall flat on our face at some point. So, you know, get it out of the way, and your know, squeaking is bad. And you know, go for a good sound. And now you can tell the difference between squeaking and a good sound. Yeah. So for me, you know, having a student sit there and you know, kind of frustrated and squeak, squeak, and not be able to cover those fingers. And then when they do cover those fingers, um, that was a very discernible difference that they can make sure. when they're playing. And they can do that at home. You know, make that difference between uh, this was what I was shooting for. I didn't get there, but then I did get there, and this is what I had to do it. Yeah. Um, and that kind of reward, I mean, it's it's really apparent to the students, and it's really apparent to the teacher. Yeah. So if, if I'm understanding what you're saying, Jen, that, that having the difference between being able to get the low G and everything else while you're trying to get the low G is such a distinction. You know, so everybody knows when they're getting it and when they're not. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And, you know, in an open G, you know, if you were to start on that pitch, you know, your hands could be in kind of any position that you wanted them to be in your embouchure. could be mm -hmm. something that kind of looks like a clarinet embouchure. And you know, being able to to you know clap for students and make you know you got the, you got the note out. That's you know not the kind of reward that's going to you know provide any kind of future for them as a musician. Yeah. Because then after you get to the music later, you're going to have to go back and fix all that other stuff. And then sure. G's are eventually going to come up with music low low G's, and you're going to have to deal with that. You know, at another time. By the time they already have all these bad habits that they've created by playing, you know, the other wrong way. Yeah. You know, in, in, in looking at the tape of the final concert, um, what, what I was just noticing uh, is the sort of ease with which, you know, a, a, two people come play a duet or somebody play a solo or a quintet would sit down and play. And I assume that's because that just happens in class all the time, right? Right. Yeah, yeah individual playing in class, I mean, it happens every single day. I mean, without, I mean, any exception. Yeah. In order for students, to make decisions about how they sound, I have to make the decisions for them first. So, uh, you know, in the beginning days, very beginning days of instruction, kids are always doing stuff, you know, by themselves. You know, whether it just be sizzle with rhythm for me, or um, you know, play a, a G for me, and and you, you know, deciding that that G maybe isn't the way it's supposed to sound, and me giving them some feedback on how it should sound, 
Um, that's not an embarrassing process. I, you know, I teach my students, there's nothing embarrassing about the learning process. The learning process is, is like you said, it's messy. Um, and all of us are you know, going to fail sometimes, and that's okay, because we have to fail in order to get to where we want to get, to succeed. Not one clarinet player you know, is gonna play that G successfully the right time, the first time. So they will have some you know, experience with failure, and it's how I react to that that kind of teaches them how to react to that themselves. You know, it's a good thing, because now we know what we're doing wrong and what we can change to do differently. So students play all the time in my class by themselves. Uh, you know, they play in pairs, they play with me, they play by themselves, they play in small groups, they play in large groups, um, all, all the time, every day.